very much. Now, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thank you. I know it has been uh, a week full of toil and full of anxiety and expectations for a wonderful time. Share the word of the Lord, for he has been very gracious. He has seen us successfully through the first half of the week. And Wednesday is just marking the other new half that we are getting into, even as we await the Sabbath day. And so our topic of discussion this evening is how to succeed in the current world. And the key text comes to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 27. I have it and I will read it. The Bible says, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. May the Lord bless the reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it is the Lord God who is speaking in the book of Jeremiah. And who is he speaking to? He's speaking to the children of Judah. He's speaking to the children of Israel. And my Bible, I'm using King James Version. The subtitle, as you begin chapter 7 of the book of Jeremiah, says, Judah's sin of external religion. Remember, our topic for discussion is how to succeed in the current world. Now, our sermonet begins by this statement, come question. Many times we think we are obeying the Lord, or we think that what entails obeying the Lord is, has everything to do with our actions only. But is that the correct notion? Is that the correct idea? Is that the ideal of obeying God? What does the Bible say? And what does the author of the Bible say? What does obedience to him entail? Now, we as human beings comprise of three major faculties. And it is in these faculties that we either obey or disobey God. And what are these three faculties? These are first the faculty of the heart or the faculty of the heart, of the mind. Whenever we hear the Bible talk about the heart, it is not the literal heart. Instead, it is the mind. It is the, bed, the bedrock. It is the seat of thought. Then the second faculty is the faculty of speech. And the third faculty is the faculty of actions. And so many times we have sinned against the Lord by purporting to obey him externally, by purporting to engage in quote-unquote good deeds. But inward, inwardly, we are distant from him. And so as each of these three faculties, from the biblical view, and look at a few applications in our lives today, and see how, when we misuse them by disobeying God, they can be to our detriment, and they can curtail our ability to be successful in our Christian work, and also our ability to be successful in our daily activities. And now let us begin with the faculty of the heart. I will quickly look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are issues of life. You need to note that the Bible says that out of the heart are issues of life. What does the Bible mean when it says issues of life? What are these issues? They are the things that we think of doing. They are the things that we feel like doing. And they encompass both the good and the bad. 
And therefore, the Bible tells us to keep diligence that we can guard our heart. Again, when we look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, from verse 1 to verse 3, the Lord God, through the author, who is Solomon, gives a description of who is evil in his eyes. So let me read the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studied destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Verse 3, through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. So I need to lay emphasis here that who is evil in the sight of God? This is somebody who has studied mischief. This is somebody whose heart has a lot of mischief and who is also engaged in talking mischief. So this is somebody who is evil. This is somebody who is disobedient before the Lord God. And what does the Lord say in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 8? Remember, the God who speaks in the book of Proverbs, the God who speaks in the book in the Old Testament is the same God who speaks in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew. Jesus Christ, who is God himself, when he was here on earth and during a sermon on the mount, or what many of us refer to as the Beatitudes, was taking the multitude through what it means to be blessed. What blessedness in chapter 5 verse 8. Christ says that, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so, from the biblical point of view, we note that the Lord God desires of us. He commands us in heart. And so, this brings us to a very important question. How can a young man keep his way pure? The book of Psalm, chapter 1, verse 19, chapter, chapter 119, verse 9, poses this question. And in the same, same verse, we get an answer. And the answer says, the young man or a young man can keep his way pure by taking heed a word. Whose word? God's word. Let us have a look at the book of, sorry, let us have a, a look at the second faculty, which is the faculty of speech. Many times we as Christians worry a lot about what our actions are, but we seldom worry about what our speech is. And so what does the Bible say about speech? The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment. Now I know all of us are scholars here. What does the term edification mean? It simply means something that adds value, something that builds, something that encourages, something that makes better. Again, the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 6 echoes this by saying, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Grace, the word grace in the Bible Whenever it is used, it simplifies, it, it exemplifies you, humility. And whenever the word salt is used, it exemplifies or it signifies edification or value. No wonder Christ in the New Testament was referring to we as Christians as the salt of the earth. And I want us to look at this quick illustration. A very good chef has prepared a bowl of, let's say, for example, pumpkin soup. And they've prepared it very deliciously. They've put in the right amount of onions, the right amount of tomatoes, and the right amount of the natural spices, the pili pili hohos, the, 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 the garlic, and all that they may want to use. 
but they forget to add salt to it and they serve it. And so at the taste, at the first taste of this soup, pumpkin soup, when the, he or she who sits at the table is asked to give a verdict or an opinion as to how the food, as to how food is, or as to the quality of the food, what is likely to be the verdict? The verdict is most likely to be this food is without salt. In other words, it means the food is without taste. The food is of poor quality because it is missing a very vital ingredient, which is salt. And we as Christians, speak is served with salt. Our speech is valuable, not only to us, but to the hearers. Again, the book of Malachi says that for the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge and men should seek instructions from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. And so the Bible expects us to employ wisdom in our speech, to have salt in our speech, and to have grace, to speak gracious words in our speech. Let us have a look at the third faculty, which is the last faculty. I said from the beginning that we are looking at three major faculties with which we disobey or choose to obey God. And so the third faculty is the faculty of action. Now, the Bible in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. The word deed there is synonymous with the word action. So we are to love in action and in truth. Again, the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, this is the Lord Jesus speaking. He says, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give to your Father who is in heaven. The book of Titus, another description, an unfortunate description because these are people who have chosen to disobey God through their action. And according to the Lord God, these people are detestable and they are not good unto any of us. And therefore the Bible in the book of Titus, chapter 1 verse 16 says, They profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient unfit for any good work. So dear brethren, as we have seen, there are only three areas that we can choose to obey God in and through, or we can choose to disobey God in and through. Now, what are some of these detrimental practices? insofar as these three faculties are concerned. The first detrimental uh, uh, practice, which is in the first uh, faculty, is evil thoughts. Now, how are our evil thoughts manifested? One, whenever we have anger, we harbor anger in our hearts. Whenever we have malice, whenever we have strife, whenever we engage in hatred, Whenever we engage in unforgiveness and bitterness, we are harboring evil thoughts. And yes, it is right to be angry. And it is normal for us to be angry. But the Bible says, sin not in thy anger. Sometimes we can be angry for genuine reasons, but that must not let us sin. That must not let us disobey the Lord God. And again, it is sin to be angry for no apparent reason. And many of us, if not all of us, are guilty of this. The second detrimental practice 
that can derail our success in our Christian walk and in our daily lives while we are here on earth is evil speech. How is evil speech manifested? Evil speech is manifested in tail bearing. What do I mean tail bearing? Tail bearing simply refers to a tendency of spreading news about events or about people. Let's say, for example, for my brothers and sisters who are in campus, something happens to a sister or a brother. And then all you can do is end up sharing occurrence to the rest of the news in the campus. And Mark, you, the, the, the main intention as to why you end up sharing this issue is not for you to try to assist this brother or sister who is in problem, but to just feel good in sharing other people's misfortune or in sharing the happenings that take place. That is evil speech. Another tendency is gossip. Whenever we gossip, we engage in evil speech. Whenever we gloat, gloating is another evil speech. Something unfortunate has taken place to somebody who you deem as your enemy or to somebody who you don't find likable and you rejoice in it. We call, the Bible calls that gloating and the anger of the Lord shall be kindled against such a person who engages themselves in gloating. Another way of engaging in evil speech is engaging in idle words. How many times have we talked words that have no meaning? How many times have we spoken so many words that have no value? Many times. And the Bible says that the Lord God shall judge each and every person for every idle word they uttered. And another way that we can engage in evil speech is through telling lies. And all of us are guilty of this. A lie is a lie. Whether it is a white lie, whether it is a black lie, I don't know whether there are red lies. A lie is a lie. Anything that is not true is a lie. It does not matter the intention that you had when you are telling that lie. It is a lie and it is sin before the Lord God. And when you do that, you are engaging in evil speech. And therefore, you are going against what God commands us to do in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 23. Now, the third and the last area of detrimental practice is when we engage in, in evil or hateful actions. Evil or hateful actions. And this is manifest in us being mean to one another in us being discriminative to one another, in us being selfish, in us being reckless, and in us being treacherous. How many times do we do things, good things to people, while we have a selfish agenda? Many times. How many times do we speak words of kindness, but our real intention is to benefit from that particular person to whom we are telling these good words. How many times have we engaged ourselves in, tre in treachery? Many, many times. And so just as we, as we have seen in the Bible, these are things that when we engage in, they distance us from the Lord. They grieve the Lord. And the Lord God says that if we disobey him, then surely he will punish those who disobey him and to the third and fourth generation because those who disobey him simply say to him that, Lord, we hate you. Because it, with the Lord God, there is no middle ground. We cannot say that we love him in, in our words while our actions say the opposite. Likewise, we cannot say we, we love the Lord in our actions and in our speech while in our thoughts we do the things that he commands us not to. And so, the Bible tells us that when we obey God by not regarding any iniquity in our hearts, then surely the Lord God will hear our prayers. I like how the psalmist 
in the book of Psalm chapter 66, verse, 20, verse 18, puts it, that surely if I regard any iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. How many of us have hindered God's blessing, have hindered God's strengthening by regarding iniquity in our hearts, by regarding iniquity in our speech, by regarding iniquity in our action, we are guilty and we need the help of the Lord God. Iniquity, oh dear. Especially those that we do not think that matter to the Lord. Then what does the Lord say? He will come and acknowledge the will in order to be successful in our Christian work and in our daily activities, even as he prepares us for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now I want us to look at a closing text, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 11. The Bible tells us to seek the Lord and his strength, to seek his presence continually. I repeat, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. How are we supposed to do this? Instead of letting our minds wander in evil thought, letting our actions be riddled with a lot of evil, let us meditate upon the word of God. Let us read his word. Let us meditate upon it. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to come and make an indwelling in us so that he can direct our speech and our actions. That anything that proceeds out of our minds or our hearts that anything that proceeds out of our mouths and any action we undertake be only those that glorify him and be those that draw as many souls as possible to Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. And now I'll finish by reading two quotes. The first quote says, A Christian reveals true humility by showing the gentleness of Christ, by being always ready to help others, by speaking kind words and performing unselfish acts, which elevate and ennoble the, the most sacred message that has come to our world. The second quote says, half-hearted Christians are worse than infidels, for their deceptive words and non-committal positions lead many astray. The infidel shows his true colors. The lukewarm Christian deceives both parties. He is neither a good worldling nor a good Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. And therefore, just as I began by reading the key text, which is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23, which you will allow me to kindly go through again. The Bible says, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. The Lord God does not say one thing to mean another. He means exactly what he says. And he says exactly what he means. We have seen from the three faculties. The first faculty being the faculty of speech. The second faculty being the faculty, sorry, the first faculty was the faculty of the heart or the mind. Then the second faculty was the faculty of speech. The third one was the faculty of action. We have seen that surely the Lord God expects nothing short of purity in us. He expects us to obey him in our thought patterns, in our speech and in our actions. And when we do that, he promises that he will be our God and we will be his people. That means that he will make an indwelling in us 
And oh, what blessedness it is to have the Lord God be part and parcel of us. It means that all the success we need to survive in this world, all the success we need in our spiritual walk, we will obtain from him. We will attain it. All the success we need in our daily activities, we will acquire. Because he concludes the verse of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 23, by saying that if you walk in the ways that I have commanded you, then it may be well with you. And so, brothers and sisters, let this be our, be our prayer, even as we cross over to the other half of the week, that we may endeavor to be true to the Lord and to his bidding in our hearts, in our speech, and in our actions. And may the Lord God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for listening. And may the Lord continue to keep us till we meet again. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless. Thank you.